Hi, I'm Prally Wright. Welcome back to the Hoop Scoop. Let's recap the wild ride women's bracket that took place yesterday. If you thought the first two rounds in the women's bracket went as expected, well, I'm here to tell you, not the Sweet 16, baby. March Madness was unleashed upon us yesterday. There were upsets, unexplained behaviors and actions by the official, and my Cinderella, probably yours as well, they are still with us. Let's jump right in. There was drama right out the gate with the first game between Notre Dame and Oregon State. 32 seconds into the game, the officials stopped the game to address a shot clock issue. Kind of normal, right? Okay. There was another stoppage or a foul that was called on Notre Dame star, my freshman of the year, Hannah Hadogel, for an undisciplined body foul. I've never heard of that. But anyway, but for this instance, it had to do with a nose ring worn by Hannah Hadogel. Mind you, Hannah had worn the same nose ring two previous games and was told that she could cover it up. At the end of the first quarter, the official called the foul on her and removed her from the game. It was six minutes of the second half before Hannah could enter the game. But that's not the story. The story is she is sitting there on the bench for what seems like forever. And I don't know what kind of nose ring she had in. But whatever it was, it required pliers. Let me repeat that. It required pliers or what seemed like pliers for the staff from Notre Dame to remove it from her nose. This would have a huge negative impact on the game for Notre Dame, in my opinion. Because Hannah, if you know or have been watching that team, is the emotional engine that makes that team go. She does everything for this team. She she is there defensively for them. She's there offensively for them. She's there to pick their spirits up. Like I said, she's the emotional engine. Having that engine pulled out, revved down, basically turned off, sitting there for six minutes. And when she's finally in the game, she, who again is a freshman, having to collect herself, try to put this to the back of her her brain and get charged back up emotionally for this game and also get her team going. Well, as you would guess, this proved too much. And young Hannah was unable to wield her team past Oregon State. The officials' thumbprints were all over this game. And that is essentially what handed Oregon State the game by five points, 70-65. In her post-game interview, Hannah said she was told she could wear the ring as long as she covered it up. In wrapping up this game, there's one thing that continues to bother me about this game. I would like to know, why couldn't they wait until halftime and have her remove the ring from her nose? What say you? Are you bothered by this? Anyway, let's move on. The second game between South Carolina and Indiana had its own dramatic moments, but for basketball reasons, as it should be. The game started in the same way as the other two games did, with South Carolina beating the snot out of Indiana. At one point in this game, South Carolina was up by 22 points on a spectacular game plan by Coach Staley to feed Cordozo all game long. With this plan, the Gamecocks went into halftime with a 17-point lead. But this is where the tides turn. The gods of the March Madness tournament said, nah, no way, enough. I mean, how else would you explain what happened next? Let's go to the second half. Indiana came out red hot from three-point land, hitting everything. I mean, boom, 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 shots after shots. Indiana is a good three-point shooting team. This is how they beat you. This is known. On to South Carolina. For some strange reason, they stopped feeding Cardozo in the post. And I don't know if it's just Indiana couldn't miss or South Carolina's three-point defense just went away. You could see South Carolina was falling apart. And I guess Staley's plan was to let the team work it out, try and work their way out of it themselves. But it was not working. I mean, they were being run down. They were being chased. There were no adjustments being made on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, 
Cardozo was calling for the ball. She was being frustrated because she wasn't being fed the ball. And when she was being fed the ball, she wasn't being fed the ball in the right position in the post, which led to some turnovers. Indiana had the momentum and was not about to relinquish it. With about a minute left to go in the game, Indiana came within two points of South Carolina, 72-74. Coach Staley had finally seen enough to call an actual timeout. I think everybody knew coming out of that timeout, the plan would force the ball inside to Cordozo for an easy layup, kind of. Out of the timeout, Cordozo took up her position, lowish in the post. The ball found its way to her as expected, and boom, there's a twist. Cardozo made a quick pass back out to Raven Johnson, the player that everybody slacks off of. This would prove costly for Indiana as Raven Johnson stepped up and knocked down the big three-point shot. And just like that, South Carolina had gained favor with the basketball gods again. There were a couple of free throws from both teams and a defensive stop from South Carolina, which allowed South Carolina to narrowly escape with the win, 79 75. Up next is Stanford and the Cinderella School, North Carolina State, and Isaiah James, a name to remember because girlfriend can straight out ball. From tip off, North Carolina showed up matching Stanford, Brink, and the mighty Kiki Oriofen, fresh off of her 41 points, which got Stanford to the Sweet 16. Stanford had 12 points. North Carolina State had 11 points in the first quarter. The second quarter, Stanford was able to pull away a bit, outscoring North Carolina State by nine. The third quarter was where the damage would be done. James scored 16 of her 29 points in the third quarter to help outscore Stanford 28-10. This was, this was both exciting and crazy because we fully expect Stanford to take care of NC State. The final quarter started out a bit more competitive. Just as things started to get better for Stanford, both Brinks and Kiki found themselves in foul trouble, same as last game. Brinks finished with 13 points, nine rebounds, and seven massive blocks before fouling out of the game with eight minutes of play left in the fourth quarter. Kiki would survive the game with four fouls, but the damage done in the third quarter was just too much for her to try and save her team, as she had done in the previous game. Kiki finished with 26 points and 10 rebounds. The game MVP was Isaiah James, who logged 29 points, three of five huge three-pointer and almost perfect from free throw going 10 of 11, beating Stanford 77-67 and rolling into the elite age screaming, why not us? Why not North Carolina State? We look forward to seeing what North Carolina State and Isaiah James brings to the elite eight. The last game of the night was the only game that went as expected. Texas used their defense to beat Gonzaga into submission and sail into the Elite Eight. I really can't say much more about this game. The starters controlled this game from start to finish. Aaliyah, Madison, Shea, and Shaley Gonzalez grabbing a total of 27 rebounds, causing 16 turnovers, forcing Gonzaga to commit 18 fouls was the recipe they needed to come away with the win, 69-47, to sail into the Elite Eight without hardly breaking a sweat. The second half of the Sweet 16 game kicks off today at 12.30. I will have a front seat. I hope you will too. But if you're not, click in tomorrow for a recap. Like, comment, and subscribe to help us grow the channel.